Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. We're really glad you're here. We pray our service will be a blessing to you. Uh, this weekend, we have the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. In our service today, we're going to take a look at times of testing that we face because of things other people do, especially when they fall into some kind of sin. We start with a special prayer here. Why don't we fold our, why don't we uh, take a time for private meditation? We'll compose ourselves and then we will begin. Maybe before we do that, can everyone hear okay? Are we doing all right? Okay? All right. Let's uh, pause for a moment for private meditation and then we will begin. And we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather together to worship you and hear your word. And as we hear the scriptures today, help us to appreciate all the more the forgiveness we have for our sins, the perfect life we will have in heaven, and all the other blessings of salvation we have through your Son, Jesus. Lead us to rejoice always in the love that moved you to send your Son, Jesus to be our Savior. Help us to fight against all temptations and enable us to live our lives in joyful service to you. You may remain seated and we continue in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I rejoiced with those who said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. My soul will rejoice in the Lord. It will delight in his salvation. Because your mercy is better than life. My lips will worship you. Serve the Lord with gladness. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things.
In humility, let us draw near to God and confess our sins to him. Lord God, my heavenly Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I was sinful the instant my life started at conception. I have failed to obey your holy law perfectly as you require because of the sins of thought, word, and deed that I have committed, I admit that I have earned and deserve your curse and everlasting punishment. I realize that I could never earn your love or your salvation with my own works. As a humble and contrite sinner, I ask you to have mercy on me and to forgive me because of the perfect life and innocent death of your son, Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Our dear Savior Jesus went to the cross to give his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. On the third day, he rose again from the dead to prove that he is indeed the Son of God and that he truly has done all that is necessary so that we are completely forgiven for all sins and are declared righteous in God's sight. Do you believe this? Yes. Praise be to our loving God for leading you to believe this good news. Through faith, these wonderful blessings are yours personally to enjoy. Through faith in Jesus, you are God's dear child. You can be sure that God will always love you, care for you, and bless you. He will not treat you as your sins deserve. When your last hour comes, you can be sure God will take you to be with him in the glories of heaven. Sing to the Lord, for he has done amazing things. Let this be known in all the earth. Let's rise for this response. we pray. O Lord, your ears are always open to the prayers of your humble servants who come to you in Jesus' name. Teach us always to ask for things according to your will, trusting that you will hear us and give us the answer that is best for us. 
because of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our Old Testament lesson today is written in the 24th chapter of Exodus. We start with verse 3. Moses came and reported to the people all the words of the Lord and all of the ordinances. Then all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord has spoken we will do. Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He got up early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain. He set up twelve memorial stones for the twelve tribes of Israel. He sent young Israelite men who offered whole burnt offerings and sacrificed fellowship offerings of cattle to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in bowls, and he splashed half of the blood on the altar. He took the book of the covenant and read it, alo and read it loud to the people, and they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, we will obey. Moses took the blood and splashed it on the people. He said, Look, here is the blood of the covenant, which the Lord made with you by, by means of all these words. So far, the Old Testament lesson. Our epistle lesson is written in the 10th chapter of Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. We start with verse 1. For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and they were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all drank, or they all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. He had them die in the wilderness. Now these things took place as examples to warn us not to desire evil things the way they did. Do not become idolaters like some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to celebrate wildly. And let us not commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Let us not put Christ to the test as some of them did, and so were, dis were being destroyed by the serpents. And do not grumble as some of them grumbled, and were destroyed by the destroyer. All these things that were happening to them had meaning as examples, and they were written down to warn us to whom the end of the ages has come. So let him who thinks he stands be careful that he does not fall. No testing has overtaken you except ordinary testing. But God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tested beyond your ability. But when he tests you, he will also bring about the outcome that you are able to bear it. So far the epistle lesson. <laughs> And we'll ask those who are present to rise for the gospel lesson. And the Holy Gospel is written in the 21st chapter of St. John. We start with verse 15. 
Jesus is talking to Peter, as you might recall, uh, on Monday, Thursday, Peter had denied, even swore, that he did not know Jesus. When they had eaten breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I care about you. Jesus told him, feed my lambs. A second time, Jesus asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, you know that I care about you. Jesus told him, be a shepherd for my sheep. He asked him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you care about me? Peter was grieved because Jesus asked him the third time, do you care about me? He answered, Lord, you know all things. You know that I care about you. Feed my sheep, Jesus said. Amen, amen, I tell you. When you were young, you dressed yourself and went wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will tie you and carry you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. After saying this, he told him, follow me. So far the gospel. You may be seated and we'll continue with the next hymn. It's performed by Koine. those who are present to rise. God is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. The words of God we'll consider today are written in the 32nd chapter of the book of Exodus, 
We start with verse 7. The Lord spoke to Moses, Hurry down, because your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have quickly turned, turned from the way which I commanded them. They have made a calf for themselves out of metal and have worshipped it. They have sacrificed to it and said, This is your God, Israel, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen these people, and they are certainly a stiff-necked people. So now leave me alone, that my anger can burn hot against them, so that I may consume them and make you into a great nation. Moses begged the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your anger burn against your people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say he brought them out for an evil purpose to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn back from your fierce anger and change your mind about inflicting disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, to whom you swore by your own self. You said to them, I will multiply your seed like the stars of the sky, and I will give all this land that I have spoken about to your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. Then the Lord changed his mind about the disaster which he had said he would inflict on his people. This is God's word. Please be seated. In the name of the Lord, who is patient and forgiving, dear friends in Christ. We don't always think about it, but there are times when we are tested because of the sins that other people commit. And maybe the more you think about it, that's very plain, but sometimes we... We don't always have that in our minds, that many times we are tested when other people sin. And maybe we can think of an example. All right, you're present and you see somebody do something. Now what? Okay? How are you going to handle it? Uh, maybe... Maybe what they did didn't really affect you, but maybe it did. Maybe, in fact, they sinned against you. Maybe they sinned against somebody you care about. So then now, how are you going to handle it? How are you going to react? Are you going to have what God wants in mind when you deal with those who have fallen? Or are you maybe going to oh, give in to the feelings that the sinful nature produces, and the thoughts and the desires that the, the sinful mind sometimes puts in us. See, sometimes when people do things, especially if they do things that hurt us or somebody we care about, oh, we can get angry, right? We think, oh, I don't like what they did. And part of me would like to just let them have it. After what they did to me, I have every right to just give in to my anger and make them suffer because of, of what they've done. Sometimes the temptation is there that uh, I don't like what they did or they hurt me in some way, and so all I want to do is say or do the absolute meanest, nastiest thing I can do to them. And if anybody says anything, I'll say, well, they deserve it after what they did. Or somebody will say, now... or Somebody might challenge me, and I'll say, ah, that'll make them think twice before they ever do that again. But is that really what the Lord wants us to do? Hmm? Just satisfying those feelings that I have, giving in to the anger that's there, hurting them back because of the way they've hurt me. Is that what the Lord wants? See, if I do that, that doesn't really honor God. If I do that, it doesn't truly help them, even if I convince myself that it'll maybe discourage them from doing things again. And if I do that, really what I've done 
is I've made myself guilty of sin as well, right? And that's one of the devil's favorite tricks, to get people, other people, to fall into sin, to get them to do something I don't like because that means uh, I'll be tempted and maybe very likely fall into also committing sins that I make myself guilty as well. If I truly want to honor God, if I truly want to help other people, if I want to protect myself from falling into sin, I need to always have what God wants in mind. I need to have what God wants in mind when I deal with those who have fallen. And we see an example of that here with, with Moses. And maybe you almost shake your head in disbelief when you think of what the children of Israel did here. Eh? Hadn't been all that long since the Lord had led them out of slavery in Egypt. And you think of the miraculous things that God did and the way that he opened up the Red Sea when Pharaoh's army was coming after them. He destroyed Pharaoh's army, led them to safety. Not long after that, uh, he provides what they need, manna, quail, water. Then later on, or they had fought another enemy, and God gave them victory over that enemy. Hmm? See, the Lord had done so much for them. And then they're at Mount Sinai, and there's fire on the mountain, and the mountain trembles, and God gives them his law. And they say, we'll do this. We will do this. We read about it earlier in the Old Testament. Everything the Lord has said, we will do. They made that promise to him. What happens? Moses goes up the mountain 40 days, so not even six weeks. Not even six weeks, and they make a golden calf, fall down and worship it, and indulge in various kinds of sins. And, oh, you could see where the Lord would be angry, eh? But interesting, even before he deals directly with the people, he talks to Moses, and he uses the people's sin as an opportunity to test Moses. We're told. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen these people, and they certainly are a stiff-necked people. So now leave me alone, so that my anger can burn hot against them, that I may consume them and make you into a great nation. You see the test there for Moses? First of all, uh, things weren't always so easy with Moses and the people of Israel. He was the leader. Many times the people grumbled to him, and the pressure was on him. And sometimes we're even like that, right? We know what God wants, and when people don't do it, we can get disgusted with them. We could get angry at them. You could see Moses being tempted to say, yeah, Lord, let them have them. Wipe them out. After all you've done for them, and this is how they repay you, yes, just give them what they deserve. And he doesn't, eh? And what else? Oh, Lord, why does your anger burn against your people? whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand. Why should the Egyptians say he brought them out for an evil purpose, to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? So, here then he also has the Lord in mind, and he appeals to God's honor. Hmm? The Lord wants people to think correctly about him. He wants people to stand in awe of him, to respect him, hey? And Moses said, but what will the Egyptians think if you do this? Hmm? They're going to think you just brought them out to destroy them. So he appeals to God's honor, and then he does something else. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, to whom you swore by your own self. You said to them, I will multiply your seed like the stars of the sky, and I will give all this land that I have spoken about to your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. Then Moses appeals to God's promises. Lord, you swore by your own self. You are the Lord, and you always do what you say. You always keep your promises, and you said that you would bring them to the promised land. You said you were going to make them into a great nation. Lord, how can you keep your promises if you will do this? 
So Moses has the Lord in mind, appeals to his honor, appeals to his promises, and we're told the Lord changed his mind about the disaster which he said he would inflict on his people. Hmm? Moses had what God wants in mind when these people had fallen. And beautiful example for us. And a good prayer to pray. Lord, help me to do that. Uh, we're going to deal with people who sin. Uh, not always very easy, but Lord, help me to have what you want in mind when I have to deal with people who have fallen. And, and we mentioned before about how difficult it can be. Uh, sometimes people do things that just, oh, they really upset us. And the temptation is there to get angry, <coughs> and the temptation is there to act out of anger, to not think about what God wants, to, but to think only of what will satisfy these feelings of anger, only to think about what I can do to make them pay for what they've done. And that's, again, not going to honor God. It's not going to truly help people, and it's not going to truly help me. We need to keep the Lord and what he wants in mind. Uh, the temptation, one of the temptations is there to just say, I don't care. Uh, I hope you get what you have coming. Then what does the Lord say? It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. How could I wish that on anybody? What else does the Lord say? Well, the Bible says he's patient, not wanting any to perish, but that all would come to repentance. And so with that in mind, what does God want? He wants me to lead people to see their sin, to turn from their sin, to trust in Jesus for forgiveness so that they escape God's anger, so that they can be right with God, be sure of his love, and continue to enjoy his blessings in life. So with that in mind, the Lord tells us, if somebody has fallen, you who are spiritual should restore them. Or again, he says, go and show them their fault just between the two of you. That's keeping the Lord in mind when I deal with people who have fallen. Always, again, always with that goal to help them and not to hurt them. Sometimes when it comes to dealing with what other people have done, the first thing I have to do is deal with myself. Okay? Uh, those of you who are parents, um, did you ever do that? Uh, your kids did something and maybe you had warned them and maybe they had done it before and they did it again and uh, they, they do it again and you're just, oh, you're just infuriated. And you, oh, finally, you just kind of say, go to your room now and stay there. And why? Well, for one reason, I need to deal with my own anger before I can really deal properly with what they've done. See, sometimes I've got to take time and just, all right, Lord, I know how I'm feeling right now. Uh, help me to control my anger. Help me that I don't let anger be controlling me as I deal with this. Because, well, if you're going to discipline your kids out of anger, that's the first step then to becoming abusive. And that doesn't benefit your children, and it certainly doesn't benefit them long term. Uh, it just makes you feel awful about yourself. I don't want to do anything that I'm going to regret later on. So, Lord, help me to be honest with myself. And it, whether it's with my kids or with somebody else, is my first concern right now my own anger? Is my initial reaction to do something that's going to hurt them because I don't like what they've done? Am I thinking about how can I lead them to see their sin, or am I thinking about how can I hurt them because I don't like what they've done? So, Lord, help me to deal with my own feelings. If necessary, help me to overcome my own feelings and help me to remember what really 
needs to be done, what you want to be accomplished, to do what's necessary to lead them again, to see their sin and to turn from the sin and then to turn to Jesus as their Savior. And again, the Lord says, speaking the truth in love, we will help them to grow up in all things uh, through Christ who is the head. To go and talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. The Bible says, if your brother has sinned, go and show him his fault. But be careful. You who are spiritual should restore him gently. Be careful so that you yourself are not tempted. And sometimes maybe it's good to go back and just think of the Lord with the Israelites. Hmm. How many times was the Lord patient with them? You read through the book of Judges. You read through other sections of Scripture as well. They fall again and again. And sometimes, in wisdom, he allows them to deal with troubles and hardships to make them wake up and change their ways. But he was patient. He never stopped loving them. He was always willing to forgive them. And maybe I don't need to even go back that far. Sometimes all I need to do is Maybe look at my own life, the mistakes I've made, and think of what God could do to me because of things I've done. And, and it happens sometimes. Lord, I promise I'll never do that again. And then I do do it again, and ugh. I feel awful, and I know what God could do. Sometimes I'm terrified of what he might do. And yet... God still loves me. He's patient. And no matter how many times I go to him, there's always that blessed message. Take heart. Jesus died even for this. Even this is forgiven. And sometimes maybe he lets me face consequences because of my actions. Sometimes there's hardships. Sometimes I make a mess of my life and it's not always very easy. But even then, he still loves me. He still helps me through. He still forgives me. And he's still loving me and working to bless me. When I think of how God has been patient and forgiving in my life, can that motivate me then to be careful when I deal with other people? And again, it, 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 sometimes people do things and sometimes it really hurts. And, and sometimes, again, I just am so angry. And I just so much want to hurt them because of what they've done. To catch myself and say, Lord, you're patient with me. Help me to be patient with them. Lord, you speak your truth to me to help me. Help me to speak the truth to them to help them. Help me, Lord, that I don't act in a way that's intended to satisfy my feelings of anger. Help me to act in a way that's in line with what you want so that I can help them in the way that's, that's truly best. Lord, I know you want all people to come to repentance and to, be, and to enjoy your forgiveness, me and others. So, Lord, help me to remember the goal to lead them to see the sin, to turn from the sin, and to trust in Jesus for forgiveness. Not always easy, Lord. Help me to analyze what I'm thinking and feeling and to then be thinking of you. Help me, Lord, to have what you want in mind when I deal with those who have fallen. Help me, Lord, to do that. Amen. And you may remain seated. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Heart, O oh God, and renew our right spirit.
And we'll join in confessing our faith according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we'll continue with the response of prayer. We pray. Lord God, our Father, through the working of the Holy Spirit, we have been led to know and believe the words of the Holy Scriptures. Through this faith, we know you as our dear Father and your Son, Jesus Christ, as our Savior from sin. Through this faith, we are your true children who have been given eternal life. In your word, you give us wonderful promises to nourish our faith and to encourage us as we live in this sinful world. Lord, we know the Holy Spirit works through the Word and the sacraments to create and strengthen faith in our hearts. Lord, in your word, you speak to us and tell us the truth we need to know. Send your Holy Spirit to work in our hearts, to lead us to believe and follow everything you tell us. Lord, we know that your word often goes contrary to our human reason. There are times when you tell us to do or believe things that make no sense to our human thinking. Please work. We thank you for the many blessings that you give to us in this life. Help us to remember that the blessings of salvation are the best and most important of all. Lord, we offer two special prayers today. First of all, for Bob Lackey, who has been hospitalized but has returned home, but is still struggling with his health. Please, Lord, exercise your power and grant him healing. Please help his health to improve. Lord, through it all, help him to keep on looking to you, praying to you, and trusting in you, knowing that in all things, even in times of testing, you love us and are working for our good. We also offer a prayer, Lord, for Edna Prowse, whose son Ben passed away recently. Lord, sometimes we struggle with your will in our lives, and sometimes it really hurts, but help us to know that you know what you are doing and are always working for the blessings you know are best in all our lives. Thank you, Lord, for bringing Ben to saving faith, for now putting to end all his earthly struggles and for giving him that glory and bliss that will never end. Please, Lord, help Edna and her loved ones to look to you, to pray to you, and to cling all the more firmly to your promises, knowing that you will comfort them and strengthen them and give them the help that they need. Hear us now, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Amen. 
Please hear us now as we pray the prayer your Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> As we prepare to receive the Lord's Supper, we go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we ask you to grant us your blessing as we receive the Lord's Supper today. Please work in our hearts so that we will receive the sacrament in humility and be strengthened in our faith by it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As you prepare to receive the Lord's Supper, please give answer to the questions I, a called servant of God, now ask you. Do you confess that you are sinful, but do you believe that God still loves you in spite of your sins and desires your salvation? If so, answer, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. Do you believe that God has forgiven all your sins because of Jesus' perfect life and innocent death? If so, answer, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. Do you believe that in Holy Communion the Lord is performing a miracle and is giving you Jesus' body and blood in, with, and under the bread and the wine? If so, answer, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. Do you believe that through this sacrament the Lord is reminding you again of the, of the forgiveness Jesus won for you and that he is also giving you again the forgiveness Jesus won for you? If so, answer, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. Do you believe that through the Lord's Supper the Holy Spirit will strengthen your faith and make you more sure of God's love and the salvation he has freely given you in his son Jesus? If so, answer, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. As is noted in, in our worship folders, we practice close communion. Therefore, we ask only members of our congregation or another congregation in fellowship with us to come forward. By doing this, we don't mean to pass judgment on anyone's faith, but we know that while the Lord's Supper offers wonderful blessings, it can also cause great harm. So we always seek to study the scriptures with people before we invite them to receive the sacrament. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. O Christ, Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us and grant us your peace. Amen. We'd like you now to come forward to receive the sacrament by coming down this far aisle. When you get to the door there, uh, pause. And again, we're trying to practice social distancing here on Saturday, so please keep some distance between you and the person in front of you. 
And when Tim gives you a nod, you can come. He'll put the bread like this in your hands so that no skin touches yours, and you can take the bread as he speaks the word. Then you can come here, and I will put a cup right here, and when I speak the words, you can take the cup, and then you can put the empty cup there, and then you can return to your seat. So we invite you now to come to the table of the Lord. Now may this, the true body and the true blood of our Lord and Savior, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Take heart, your sins are forgiven. Depart in peace. Amen. And we will pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for granting us your blessings this day. Defend us with your mighty power, and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And, all, and in all that we do, direct us to do what is right in your sight. We also give you our thanks, Lord, for blessing us through Holy Communion. Please strengthen our faith and keep us as your own forever. We pray this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. I will bless the Lord at all times. There is now no condemnation.
the one who believes in the Son, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. And we'll close with the final hymn. kingdom to serve his Good evening again. Thank you for being here. We're glad you're here. We pray God's word you heard would be a blessing for your life. Uh, not much in the bulletin other than uh, this week we have DOE and council coming up. And again, we've uh, opened up at least on Sundays. We are having a couple of pews set aside for those who pr want to continue to practice social distancing. Uh, Saturdays, we're going to try to be more conscious of that. So we've been telling people for those who are concerned and still want to practice that social distancing, we're urging them to come Saturday night. The other thing we'd, we'd like to do is to ask for your thoughts on how we did things. We've done this uh, last week now. Last week, we finished the service and did Holy Communion afterwards. This time, we incorporated in the service. But we did the, uh, well, some people call it continuous flow. Uh, we'd like to get your thoughts on that. Should we keep on doing that, or should we go back? Uh, to the way we used to do it. Um, again, we want to serve you in the best way that we can, so please let us know what you think. I think those are the announcements. Maybe we'll just say uh, one other thing. I know we had some people serving across the sea, and it was, what, two weeks ago today, I think. They made it back home safe and sound. We're glad God kept you safe. And uh, I have a hunch we're not the only ones glad that they are back safe and sound. So thank you, Lord, for protecting them and bringing them home. So. Uh, thank you, everyone. Good evening, and God bless you. Mm -hmm.